Uh, so without further ado, uh, we're going to start off uh, with our very first uh, presentation uh, from Alex Owens, um, who's going to be talking about uh, a fantastic uh, geographic modelling uh, project looking at uh, assessing inequalities and demographic coverage of service locations. So over to you, Alex. Is everything sharing OK? Yeah, all coming through fine, Alex. Good. good. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Alex Owens. I'm an analytics lead at Arden and GemCSU, uh, and I've been working on this project alongside Phoebe Woodhead and Sean Heath, um, who are my pro attendees for the HSMA program, which has been kind of very useful in putting all of this together. Um, so the, the idea on, on this um, basically is a demographic valuation and allocation of services, as the title says, um, which is looking at kind of service providers and the services they've got set up geographically um, and how to evaluate their coverage um, in kind of population and then see if there are any gaps and potentially allocate new services to try and cover those gaps. Um, so one of, the, one of the questions we often get from the CSU side um, generally as a, as a kind of supportive organisation um, is various levels of teams have limited resources um, to implement a change that they think is going to be helpful. So where is the best place to apply these resources um, and how would you make the biggest impact? Um, so a large part of this is going to be um, kind of variety of areas, so a service line, um, or specifically in this situation, what we're hoping to apply it to is specifically services directly and so location-wise, um, and how they pick up kind of patients and how they best can allocate the resource to pick up the most patients that are going to be impacted by that service. One of the other questions that comes along, um, and this is kind of since the, the implementation of long-term plan, but before that as well, is will it disadvantage any groups if we put our, our service in this location or apply this resource in this way? Um, and the secondary kind of follow-up question is, is also generally, uh, is our current implementation access equally? And do we need to think about that when kind of applying resource to, to try and address the inequality? Um, so the response um, that we kind of pulled together from the HSMA program and the skills we've learned there, and then also those, those initial problem questions, um, we've kind of developed a tool that will try and help address some of these issues with regards to um, kind of placing a new location if you want to, or just looking at your current um, service location footprint. Uh, so services in this instance would be, if you have a clinic that addresses a specific um, uh, like rehabilitation for something um, or an MSK condition, and you want to see kind of who's addressing, uh, who's being covered by that service. Um, so our number one step here would be to visualize this like service site footprint. Um, so kind of a, a mapping tool potentially. Um, the second one would be to, to find a way to delineate the population that's served versus those that are unserved. Um, and for this, we've kind of gone into um, some recently created lookup tables um, that look at matching travel times from LSOAs to provider sites that are already existing or LSOAs to other LSOAs um, if there's not a provider, provider site there. Um, and our, our third look at um, using some of the, the techniques from the HSMA course on modeling is to then recommend the best new expansion location if you don't have somewhere in in mind, for instance, uh, and you're looking to expand a service. Um, so some of the steps this needs, um, taking from a script to a model, first one would be to, to look at the current services you have, um, and you need a tool to do that. So we've used Streamlit, which is a way to kind of present some of that Python level um, coding and put it into a, a more palatable kind of dashboard format to help give you that overview. Um, then digging deeper into some of the functionality of Streamlit is to then suggest kind of potential expansions of the service and do some comparisons there. So pulling out some of the, the plotting functionality of Python um, to kind of compare those two elements quite kind of customizably. Um, and the last one is using some of the, the more modeling e techniques I'm learned on the HMA, HMS domain course, which is to kind of bring out either a new location from a list of locations you've already thought of um, or a service provider's already thought of, or to recommend if you have like a population deficit in a certain area, um, that you've seen from your initial kind of look at um, to recommend the best way to, to address that population deficit using some of the, the techniques. So genetic algorithms and, and fitness functions um, would basically provide a, the, the best kind of response to pulling in kind of individual patients um, that aren't necessarily covered by your existing coverage. So here I'm going to run through an example of how this would work in practice and show you a bit of the tool. Um, so in this example, we're, we're looking at Greater Manchester ICB, um, and they have a series of clinics set up from a condition called Forager's Foot. Um, a little bit of inspiration there, taken from the game or the video game Theme Hospital, uh, that has um, a variety of very fantastical conditions that are made up, um, and then you have to try and treat them. So this is our, our Forager's Foot example. Um, so these clinics are currently running at mass capacity, and they need to expand their service. 
Forager's foot typically affects people that are elderly, um, so generally people that are going to be foraging um, and spending a lot of time on their feet and then would have some other, other related conditions. Um, and then also people that are more deprived tend to pick up forager's foot are a very fantastical condition. Um, so the Microsoft Bing editing tool uh, gave me a, a very nice um, stock photo here. So using some AI image generation here to, to pull out a, an ideal cohort of forager's foot there, which is a, an elderly lady foraging with a, her injured foot. Um, and our takeaway question here is, where should they place this new service to maximize access? Um, so I will quickly jump over to my video of the tool usage um, to run through kind of the, how this is exactly used. So that should be sharing now. There we go, this slide's coming up. Um, so let's go ahead and skip out to the loading times just to, to keep to brevity. Um, so this is the, the basic tool. Um, and we can enter locations here. So there's three centers that I've entered preemptively with the latitude and longitude. And you can see a little bit on the map below where those are, are pinned down um, with the travel times to patients being the gradient of color. Um, we want to choose potentially because these are elderly people um, and, and lower deprivation or higher deprivation, but they would choose public transport. So we want to say they're within a certain distance of public transport. So we're going, choosing public transport there. Let's give up some of the loading for updating. And we want to say that people within 40 minutes travel is how much we'd expect them to travel on, on public transport to arrive at our clinics. So run forward as this is figured out. Um, so this is basically the, the view you'd get. So these are our, our three clinics, um, giving a, a metric of how far you'd go, or how much people would have to travel, or what the coverage would be if people could travel 40 minutes to get to your clinic. Um, with a series of kind of visualizations based on rural population. So the blue there would be the total number of people covered by your um, clinic. So we can see not a huge number of people are um, in rural population, it's quite hard to see in rural, so we've also done proportions as well. If you want to see the proportion of each ethnicity, IMD, and age group, there um, are three kind of demographic metrics we're looking at for this one. Quite easy to expand, but those are the three ones that are very um, openly published by ONS, so we kind of want to include those as our basics and potentially expand to other metrics. For instance, if you've got MSK condition by LSOA, we could add that as well um, to see coverage there. Um, so we've got our basic view there, um, and now we want to look at adding a new location. So we click on this add new locations provision here. And if we see a, a spot on the map that's dark blue, that means kind of it, it's outside of the travel area, we could potentially click on that. Um, and that will provide the latitude and longitude to add that location to the map. Or we can do what we're going to do here and find our specific forages for demographics here. So this is our location allocation calculation. Um, so we're looking at highest deprivation and then the elderly. Um, and then this will throw together a few kind of um, potential locations that, that would best cover these age groups. So I'll have a, a quick run forward of this one. We've got those three locations out. So those are our three proposed locations um, to look at uh, or that the, the algorithm thinks would best fit our, our model um, and best cover kind of our elderly deprived um, individuals. You can see that you can choose kind of specifically if you've identified a demographic kind of inequality within your um, model, you can pick up different um, priorities there if you want to select them. Um, and that goes on raw population. So the most people that fit those two criteria will be added to the, um, the allocation um, algorithm. So I'll skip slowly forward. Um, added that to the new service location. So I'll just input those latitude and longitudes there from that first one uh, into the, the new service location and, and added that to the map. And then this will update our, um, our comparison software. So click add to map there. And I'll skip this one forward until we get an output. There we go. So this is our output. Um, scroll down a bit. You can see that green point there will be our, our new location. Um, and then on our graphs for age, IMD, and ethnicity, you can see our, our added um, population from this new site. So you can see this site would add kind of quite a, a large range of people, um, with the priority here being that it's looking for people that are lower IMD, um, or sorry, higher deprivation, and then also elderly to specifically match this uh, this cohort, but it picks up everybody um, or adds everybody to the comparison just because that's going to add new people no matter where you put it really. Um, so this would be the, the idea. So you take this forward or you say this isn't feasible and look for new locations you put in um, technically from a, another site from a, a similar condition. Um, let me quickly run back to our, our slides.
So our hope, hope, hope will impact from this tool. Um, basically, we're looking to try and um, give service providers the information they need to plan service expansion and provide care for those that need it, um, and especially those that are being kind of overlooked by the current care provision. Um, reduce the time and resources required to make these decisions, so this gives a kind of a decent first ballpark guess. Um, you'd kind of have less thinking, less kind of consulting to do on, on individual areas if you had an easy kind of tool to, to use there. Um, and then allocate the resources you have effectively. Um, and the last one here is to ensure that decisions are made that take equability of access into account. Um, so either if it's not there already, or if your new place would kind of, or your new service location would um, induce some in inequitability, that's kind of looked at and taken into account and understood before that decision is made. Um, from the HSMA course, from our, from my side and from our side, I've learned quite a lot. Um, at the start, I've done a bit of Python before, um, but haven't really played around with object programming. It's been a great course to kind of get those very basic things understood in a very fun way. Um, Dan's quite good at kind of presenting things in kind of make this game, make this interesting thing, and, and keeping you away from some of the more kind of, I guess, technical areas of Python, um, but still touching on them in a way that, that's useful for understanding. Um, second is demonstrating methods of presenting and publishing projects. So often you get taught something, but not necessarily how to go through and use that. Um, so the streamlit dashboard I showed as an example, oh, I wouldn't have known how to do that prior going onto this program, and there is a, a streamlit module there. Um, third is the coverage of GIS and geographic visualization tools. So one of the tools in the dashboard there was the, the map um, that we had a, a few sessions to run through with Elliot, which is kind of a very useful one for being able to present some of the outcomes into your models and your um, basic kind of data visualization work. And then the last is some comprehensive deep dives into the modeling techniques, but using kind of healthcare specific examples. Um, so I've done similar things, trying to understand different techniques with non-healthcare specific and then struggled when trying to take it over to kind of a, a real life example. This has definitely been very helpful from my side to, to be able to have those level of that level of kind of context behind things and understand why I'm doing things and how I do them in my current job as well. Um, and that is, I think, me done.